Who runs the world? Not girls, but old, archaic institutions. Bitcoin has been around for 15 years, and admittedly, millions of people, including myself, and I imagine you too, dear viewer, have adopted this unbreakable technology. But despite the Bitcoin revolution, old institutions, old rules, and often old people still rule the new world. Try to persuade those who hold the power? That's a challenge. Don't believe me? Well, just watch the video of me trying to give out Bitcoin to people at the WEF, or World Economic Forum in Davos. However, 100 miles south of the secluded Swiss mountains of Davos is a small city where they've found a better way. A new way. As opposed to fighting the old system, they're building a new one. At a Bitcoin school, lecturers and Bitcoin professors teach young people and students about decentralized and peer-to-peer -peer technologies. They are sowing the seeds for a new future by shaping how the next generation thinks about money. So come with me to Logano's Bitcoin School and I'll show you just how it works. Studying Bitcoin is all very well and good, but what about surviving on Bitcoin as money for the two weeks I'm here? Logano has the highest number of Bitcoin and Tether friendly merchants per capita in Europe. So I put surviving on Bitcoin to the sword. I used Bitcoin at McDonald's, a tobacconist, a pharmacy, and I could have bought a house with Bitcoin. I'm in McDonald's paying for a coffee and an egg with muffin. Pays with Bitcoin. I need to scan this. Bam. Cool. Let's go. Mm. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I failed to use Bitcoin at a sex shop, although they promised me they'd accept it yeah, soon. these wonderful things uh, with Bitcoin just yet. Interestingly, in Lugano, you can even pay part of your taxes and city fees with Bitcoin. You might think that everyone in Lugano is a Bitcoin maxi or crypto fanatic, but no. Much like the rollout of credit cards, which took decades, starting in the 1950s, Lightning and crypto payments have some way to go. But what really fascinated me was that despite being an innovative hub for the future of finance, there are still laggards, or technophobes, all around the city. They don't just shun crypto, but they shun digital money, like credit cards too. I also scored interviews with Adam Back, the CEO of Blockstream, and you know, that guy mentioned on the Bitcoin white paper? Paolo Arduino, the CEO of Bitfinex and Tether, as well as leaders in the Lugano crypto movement. They revealed secrets never heard before, some of which may surprise you. This is Lugano. It's a beautiful Swiss city, nestled near the Alps by the Swiss-Italian border. It's a small city, and it's not known for a great deal. I mean, it hosted the first ever Eurovision Song Contest in 1956, and it's increasingly becoming a Bitcoin hotspot. So for the next two weeks, I'm gonna be studying at the Bitcoin Summer School. So come on with me as we'll spend some sats and work out if Lugano really is the best Bitcoin hotspot in the entire world. Buongiorno. I'm on my way to my first lesson, my first day of Bitcoin School. This is what my life is gonna be like for the next two weeks first lesson is called what is money and then we've got a class called Bitcoin 101 with Dr. Adam Back, one of the biggest names in Bitcoin. He was actually noted on the white paper that Satoshi Nakamoto wrote 14 years ago. What do you make of sort of Bitcoin and crypto adoption in Lugano right now? And it's pretty cool. They've got a number of things going on. Like they've involved the mayor and the local city management and integration of Bitcoin payments in point of sales terminals in a lot of the local shops, cafes, etc. And the university program and uh, some, you know, initiative to bring fintech companies to the area and to, to sort of build up an ecosystem of fintech, like Bitcoin related startups in the area as well to create local employment opportunities. That's, what yeah. that's very cool. The program introduces students to Bitcoin and peer-to-peer -peer technology. We have the opportunity to, to shape uh, young minds, but also policymakers. I mean, here we have policymakers that uh, are participating to the summer school. We have professors that are part of the students because they want to learn as well. The vision for Logano's Plan B is to expand the use of Bitcoin and blockchain throughout the city, which could bring positive changes to various aspects of Logano residents' daily lives. Whether it's small-scale transactions with local businesses or more significant activities like settling annual taxes, blockchain will play a central role in facilitating the city's financial interactions. I'm in McDonald's paying for a coffee and an egg with muffin. 
and you can see on the receipt that he's used it a few times today. It's probably a good sign. I guess lots of Bitcoin people like McDonald's. And now I need to pay. So I'm gonna go to my wallet, tap get, send, scan that, press pay. Here it's sent, but it always takes a few seconds for the machine. So it's sent there, but it takes a few seconds, doesn't it? Thank That's Emilia. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Pay is with Bitcoin. Are you personally able to live off Bitcoin and crypto in, in Lugano? You know, I, I can pay for for my food in, in Bitcoin and Tether. I have one a cut of my hairs every one month and a half and still okay. they accept Bitcoin, so that's fine. The city can allow you to pay taxes in, in, in Bitcoin, so we are we are getting there. I mean, I'm, I cannot name, apart probably El Salvador, uh, there are not many other places that are more friendly and where you could live in full in Bitcoin rather than Lugano. I have to pay these with Bitcoin Ray-Bans in Switzerland. Bitcoin, please. So we're now outside with my new sunglasses and I'm going to pay because in the building the internet was just chopped off by these wonderful um, strong stone Swiss walls. So we're going to try again and confirm payment and that should be really quick. Yeah, now it's super quick. So lesson learned, don't try to buy things in beautiful old stone buildings or connect to the Wi-Fi first because they said this sometimes happens so connect to the Wi-Fi first and now they're explaining to each other what went on. <laughs> It's kind of chill, but obviously this isn't great for, you know, if you want to do transactions all the time, which is what a shop does. So yeah, it's, it's not quite like super seamless yet, but I'm still finding it easier to live off Bitcoin here than in El Salvador, which is of course Bitcoin country, right? You're supposed to live on Bitcoin there uh, way easier. Watch that documentary if you're at all curious about what I'm saying, by the way. It takes time, even with credit cards, it took uh, 20, 25 years to get the, the level of adoption that we're seeing today. So um, I, I'm not scared about the time. I think is by, by every year that will pass, technology will help us to do uh, a better job in, uh, in bringing more people over. And also we had the ability uh, to push the adoption much faster because we have 1000 uh, merchants that are already applied for, for having the, this point of sale. I'm at Mary's Laundrette in Lugano. I'm about to pay in Bitcoin, but I'm going to do something special. I'm going to tweet it out to Twitter, the photo of the QR code. So I'm saying, you know, I'm the first Bitcoin customer at a Laundrette in Lugano. I'm going to take a picture of this QR code. I'm going to take another picture of my pants. So now I'm tweeting it. So you can see there, I've tweeted it to the internet. Oh, yeah. And in theory, someone around the world so someone around the world might pay for my pink pants a few minutes later you have to close that's okay at six o'clock oh we've got oh. oh my god it's paid it's paid someone paid it someone paid for my pants thank you kind stranger but yeah there you go lavanderia mary accepts bitcoin and sometimes people from around the world pay for you Bitcoin or Tiva? Ah, okay, so Bitcoin, por favore. Awesome. So I just scan that, do I? Well, that's quick. Then this takes a few seconds, right? Mm -hmm. Un, due, tre. Ah. Okay. So I just paid for some moisturizing cream, shaving foam, some earplugs, all with Bitcoin, <clears throat> lightning, almost instantly. And they also gave me some free plasters because they know that I'm probably going to get into trouble. I'm going to make it more fun. I'm going to make it more fun. All right, let's, let's go do the next thing. But yeah, I'm surviving on Bitcoin. This is going well. As you know, there is this strong organic growth going on really everywhere in the world that would happen if mm -hmm. we existed or not. So that's one part that is driving everything. Um, and on our end, we work a lot on education, of course, on, on informing people about the merits, um, why it exists, why it makes sense. So we have regular articles in newspapers uh, where we touch about um, touch on different um, aspects of Bitcoin and, and financial liberty. And we have the summer school, as you know, uh, we have the string school, we have the forum where again, we try to bring people who are interested in values such as financial freedom, freedom of speech. Maybe they don't know how Bitcoin plays a role in there. And we bring them there and tell them actually why uh, that makes sense. So these are things that we're doing to drive adoption. Then of course we have um, the 
the uh, network of merchants that you see and slowly slowly by um, making events talking to people to the younger ones as well that are a bit more easier to grasp maybe the concepts um, we are seeing um, growing adoption. Despite the fact that I've been going to McDonald's almost every day to get a coffee for just one franc and trust me Switzerland is very expensive so this is a very good deal and um, just then I had to show the waitress how to accept Bitcoin because she'd never done it before. So it really reminds me of what Paolo said about the fact that, you know, adoption is going to take some time. So like if you hire new staff, they need to know about this Bitcoin payment system, which is a couple of different clicks the usual, but it's something else to learn, right? So it's a question of, you know, how can you get to this new Bitcoin world seamlessly and with as good as or maybe better UX than the existing systems? That's kind of the thing that I guess the people here are wrestling with and are trying to figure out with this, you know, on the ground adoption experiment. It is really kind of an adoption issue, if you wish, right? So when the cars first came out 50 years ago, also like there are a few places who accepted that and mm -hmm. there were probably a few uh, merchants who, who knew <laughs> yeah. how to use it. Yeah, exactly. And over time, when more and more people go and pay with Bitcoin, they're going to learn these. It's, it's the best way to learn something is yeah. by doing, right? So yeah. that's why it has to go hand in hand and it is going hand in hand. It's we train the merchants mm -hmm. and we're going to have, we're having more and more payments. So these two together, over the next years, hopefully, we'll, we'll make all of these problems go away. And of course, we're working also on the technical side to make things smoother and easier and understand what the problems are and resolve them as well. I need to scan this. So I tap pay. And instantly it goes sent on here. And then it takes a few seconds usually on that because of the Tor connection. Bam. Cool. How often do you get people accepting, paying in Bitcoin here in a tobacconist? Like once a month, in, once in, once a year, once. No, once a month. Mm -hmm. In Lugan, there is the crypto Lugan. Now some people pay in Lugan. Ah, okay, but when the people come here, do they pay in Bitcoin mm. or in Luga? In Luga. Luga, which is the local stablecoin from the city of Lugano, yeah. um, and they did a great job on that because they started at the pandemic introducing this kind of digital token stablecoin. Um, when the when the lockdown hit with uh, with Corona. The administration of the city of Lugano came up with um, with different ideas to um, stimulate the local economy, mm -hmm. and one of them was to introduce this kind of digital uh, stablecoin yep. in order to just have a bit more economic activity when everything was locked down. And um, they were quite successful; many many wallets already mm -hmm. in circulation. They have good good volume as well, and they so they had already this experience. They had this mindset. And then there was a collaboration with Tether, which, which, which made sense because of that. And then we added um, to this network also Bitcoin, Bitcoin and Tether. So these guys love cash. Let's see if they also love Bitcoin. Oh, you're closed. Oh, sorry. Okay. But did you say you're going to accept Bitcoin one day? Ah, no, no lo so. Non conosco il sistema ancora. Ah, okay, okay. But you like cash? Yes. yes you like I cash? Like cash. Why, why do you like cash? Because uh, it's uh, really. It's real. It's not uh, virtual. I prefer cash. Okay, I understand. Okay, <laughs> grazie. Found another one that's uh, cash only. There are lots of people like this that are like, I don't like digital things. I need to hold it in my hands for it to be real. I mean, everything you hold in your hands right now is technically real. The WhatsApp messages you receive, the emails you send, like the data that you share, the music that you listen to, the videos that you watch, it's all virtual. <laughs> Why is your money not virtual? Come on, guys. Uh, but there you go. There are always gonna be some laggards and there are always gonna be some people that are like, no, I need to hold the money to believe that it's true. I need to, I need to see it to believe it, despite the fact that inflation is eroding what they're holding by 15% a year. One of the things that's kind of startling about this Bitcoin adoption experiment in Switzerland is that Switzerland is one of the most banked countries in the world. You know, there are financial centers and financial institutions everywhere and everyone and their dog has a bank account. So like, why would they spend Bitcoin when they can just spend fiat easily? In Switzerland, you have a strong tradition about financial privacy and a strong tradition about hard money as well. Switzerland was the last country to leave the gold standard uh, ever. 
So basically, there is a culture that is very receptive to Bitcoin. There is a culture of freedom, a culture of innovation, but uh, there is not a need. Fiat money is serving well most of the people here. So it's mostly like a cultural attempt right now to uh, basically uh, to get closer to some innovation that can be very important in the future and to rediscover some level of independence and uh, sovereignty that is lost in the Swiss uh, politics in the last uh, decade. So uh, I would say it's very different from adoption which is bottom up about need, like you are financially excluded, you cannot commerce in e-commerce because you don't have a credit card. Swiss people, they have credit cards, they have bank accounts, they have a lot of bank accounts. So what they have is mostly cultural proximity with the fundamental values of Bitcoin. So I don't expect a lot of face-to-face -face transaction, if not just as a symbol, because we like it for now for the Plan B initiative, but I expect a lot of uh, cultural movement around Bitcoin and Bitcoin's principles. I think sometimes people adopt things reactively. Mm. So there's not that much kind of forward planning. So even the companies tend to sort of wait until things get problematic and then they do something about it, right? I don't like to, to run before we can walk. And so we want to make sure that the user experience is, um, is fine and the level of uh, education is good enough in order to, to move to the next stage. I thought, why not send a postcard from one Bitcoin community in Lugana to Costa Rica and to El Salvador, from one Bitcoin community to another, obviously paying in Bitcoin. And I'm just thinking about these past two weeks and realizing that while it's so important that there are these physical spaces for people to learn about Bitcoin, about peer-to-peer -peer technologies, about decentralization, the main takeaway for me at least, and for many of the students they interviewed, is that it's the human connection that people come to these places for. People from all around the world, from Taiwan to Brazil, are coming here to discuss the ideas related to Bitcoin and Bitcoin itself, because they're crying out and they're thriving in these phenomenal human connections. So yeah, one, I'm of course still bullish on Bitcoin. I'm also bullish on the amazing human connections that people get from Bitcoin. And that makes me happy. This has been Joe Hall reporting for Cointelegraph.